Welcome to Memory Jogger Lesson 5 on the subject of pull signals. In this lesson, you'll review the concept of pull, watch a short video. So here is the definition of pull, or what a pull signal means. When work or materials are being pulled, you can't actually move the work or the material forward until there's a signal to do so, like an empty space, an empty container, or a physical card. This method eliminates the possibility of inventory accumulating between steps beyond whatever quantity is defined as a part of the process design. So let's go back to our sandwich making example and look at an example of pull. So here's how sandwiches can be made with the pull method. You set up a signal or limit on the number of sandwiches that you will make ahead of time. Maybe this is a tray that only holds a certain number and as it is emptied, you refill it. Second step, you make the sandwiches, up to the limit you've set. You don't make sandwiches for the entire day, so you'll need to be making them during the day as they're sold. You'll need to have the ingredients on hand as well, of course. Third step, customers buy sandwiches. And when your small stock of sandwiches gets low, you'll need to make more to restock. So here are the results you can expect. You sold almost exactly the number of sandwiches you made, not necessarily 100%, but close. Second, you may end the day with a few left over, but the risk is a lot less than the push method. And finally, three, the sandwiches are fresher too, but not made exactly when the customer ordered them. So who builds sandwiches or hamburgers in this way? McDonald's? and a lot of other outlets follow this model. This is what we call pull. This concludes this memory jogger on the topic of pull signals.